back to another episode of The Depths of the Melody. I had the honor of sitting down with Julian from the band Benighted, and it was it was awesome. I cannot wait to hear what you think about this interview and what you learned from Julian and also their new album coming out. So with that, Season of Mist is actually giving away their latest album. And you are not going to want to miss this. All you have to do is comment on this video and one person will be chosen at the end of April to receive either the vinyl or the CD. I hope you enjoy this interview. Julian, it is such an honor to sit down with you. Benighted has been tearing it up for over 20 years. <laughs> Make just making brutal death metal. And you're about to blow our minds again with another unrelenting assault of melody with Ekbom. Hmm. I was I was really grateful for this time because I know also that you have worked in the field of psychiatry for a long yeah. time. And being able to not only talk to you about the new album coming up, but just your background just had my mind. I was just thinking of so much because I, when I sit down with people, I, I love conversation. Yeah. N not so much regimented questions, but conversation. Mm -hmm. And I am just really excited to, to look into your, your head a little bit on this upcoming album and, and just, you know, talk about it. So thank you, man, for taking time to be here. I, I don't take that for granted. I know you could, you're busy. So thank you. I thank you for inviting me. And it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I really hope to see you uh, for real next time. We will be touring the US to be great. I'll be hitting up a lot of, I'm doing a lot, going to a lot of shows this year. And, uh, and just, yeah, I love music, man. I love music and I love connecting people with music. So like when I do any of these interviews, I always talk with Will. I'm like, Will, can we give away an album? Like, let's give away an album so that people have a chance to connect, you know? And so I love that, man. That's my favorite thing to do. And I love I love just supporting people. So I, with, with whatever platform I have, I just want people to discover artists, to discover them, to, to connect with them. That's my passion. So I this totally is- I totally understand it. This is I'm a really huge fan cool. of, the, on the, of the underground spirit, and I go to a lot of shows myself. I, I live close to Lyon, so every time there is a concert, I try to go there because I, I think that music is my, the biggest part of my life, so it's very important for me to support every kind of concert I can go uh, when I have the occasion. Oh, that's awesome, man. I love that, dude. It's powerful. Um, to get started, for the sake of any new viewer... Could you give like a brief history of Benighted? Sure. I mean, we, we started in 1998. So it's a long time ago, 20, oh my God, 26 years. <laughs> 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 and I, I'm the only, I'm the only uh, original member left in the band because I think the, now the lineup of the band, we are four. There is uh, Manu who arrived in 2014. Uh, Pierre also arrived the same year, and Kevin, the drummer, Kevin Paradis, who arrived in 2017, if I'm right. And uh, I think our new album, Egg Bomb, is our 10th album. So we already have 10 records in our, in our discography. And uh, we play, how can I say? People like to say that we play a mix between death metal, I mean, the, the, the root, the spine of our music is death metal, but we have a lot of influences around it, like grindcore, black metal, hardcore, many influences to to make our music kind of uh, kind of unique. But when you, you listen to it, you have to say, "Oh, it's, it's been lighted." And uh, on my on my side, I like to do uh, as many kind of vocals I can to um, because the concept of being lighted is uh, it's uh, psychiatry. I mean, my job and. Uh, a lot is about schizophrenia, so it's always funny to to have several vocals. Like, oh, um, how many are there? And at the end, you only have one vocalist. So that's that's a good uh, that's a good, okay. I say that a good coherence between the the concept and the music in United. 
you dude when i first heard you guys i thought there was multiple vocals yeah. i was like i was like what what, what kind of sorcery is this because <laughs> this dude this dude is on another level like your vocals man and i i have to be honest i'm not too big personally previously wasn't too big on like the squeals yeah it's particular but, I understand, but, yeah. but but dude you kill it you i like i like the way you do it because okay. because of your dynamic and how and how you have incorporated different techniques i actually like when i heard yours i was like oh okay Okay, so you you you've been kind of like a gateway for me for those kind of vocals to enjoy oh, them. It's so, a very good compliment, thank you. Bro. Yeah, so hell yeah, dude. Um, I do love what you're doing with the album of based on Ek Bomb Syndrome, which yeah, that is intense, man. That's yeah. sometimes I will feel like something's crawling on me, but the idea of something crawling under me just mm -hmm. oh is unsettling but for those um yeah ek bomb syndrome is basically where people feel like insects are crawling under their skin is that correct or yeah exactly it's a uh, uh, the i mean the, the the real term is a uh, delusional parasit paras parasitosis uh and uh, actually the ek bomb syndrome i use it in uh, in this case for, uh, for 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 schizophrenia, I mean it's close to Ekbom syndrome, and the del the delirium of the girl of the story behind Ekbom uh, is about insects crawling on her skin, connected with the trauma she experienced with her mom who died with cancer, and the, that the 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 conviction that uh, the, the the enemy is not around you, it's inside you, and at some point it will eat you alive and and make you die. And the, the way our mind um, built it as a delirium was to, to imagine that insects are eating you from the inside, a bit like cancer. That's the way I had turned the, the trauma of looking at our mom dying slowly from cancer for, for years. And uh, that's the, the basic story, I would say, of the new album. And it, it sounds really like the egg bomb syndrome, which is more normally, uh, it's a syndrome that I write more uh, with it's a, it's more a lady delirium and it's more when they're getting old it's, it's it's an hallucinatory process but i wanted to use that because egg bomb is also uh, a very enigmatic name in the death metal uh, scene i guess F first when i when i uh, when i heard the name was egg bomb what is it and uh, and uh, when i got interested in, it in my work uh, i thought this name is kind of catchy and it works very well with uh, the story I want to to put behind the behind the um, the new album, so the concept was like yeah hidden behind this mysterious name Egg Bomb, <laughs> and it, it makes people react because nobody I mean nobody knows what Egg Bomb means. So it was it was uh, for me it was a good idea of name for for a new album. Yeah, I never I've heard of that condition, but I didn't know the technical term. Mm -hmm. So like when I saw, I was like Egg Bomb. Like, is that like a demon name? What is yeah. that, dude? <laughs> Could so, be. <laughs> yeah, it it really has that kind of ring, that ring to it, where it's like, yo, this just sounds like bad news, you know? So <laughs> doesn't you... sound nice, though. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, let's have a little bit of Ekbomb, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. Now, Ekbomb, you you your albums like to follow kind of a concept a a, a driving mm -hmm. story did you have another idea what made you settle on ek bomb and this well, particular it, story uh, because uh i i realized that i always i always was talking about very important i was always talking about the history of a, of a man in the previous benighted album uh, the last one was about schizophrenic with a cleft palate. Yeah. Who, with a brutal very, album. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and very, very twisted story also. And for this one, I said, I want to talk about a girl. I want to talk about a girl and, ma and make a whole concept. I mean, visual and uh, in the lyrics uh, about uh, about something different. But we, we never made me like it something 
original, even in the okay, so in the, the kind of delirium I wanted to use because I never used insects before, and uh, it's, it's it's a pretty common topic, but uh, the, um, the the way I write the lyrics, it's always the same. I mean, I start uh, from something I experienced at my work, but someone I met with some disturbing symptoms. And then I connect it with a with a childhood trauma that could be coherent with uh, with the reality of the symptoms. I mean, as it's my work, it's very easy for me to to write lyrics which are very close to the reality of schizophrenia and the symptoms. I mean, I try to avoid all the all the cliches you can find in our movies, for example, because I I, I know what schizophrenia is and uh, I know also the the way uh, Hollywood movies can see schizophrenia, which is most of the time pretty far of reality and which is very bad for my patients also because uh, most of the time when you talk about schizophrenia, people are thinking about serial killer, dangerous people, but uh, schizophrenic people are the most vulnerable people on, on earth and uh, the, they are way more dangerous for themselves than they are for the others. And that's a very important message I try to 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 give from an album to another, it's that, yeah, these people suffer from very, very severe condition. They are in pain every day and uh, they have to be taken care of, not be not being, you know, like uh, thrown away or isolated or something. I mean, these people can, can work pretty, pretty normally and have a decent life with the appropriate uh, cares and, uh, and, um, and stay away from the, the giant cliche we can see in the movies about schizophrenia. Yeah, it's really cool, man. Just listening to how you talk about this. Obviously, you've made a a life of working in this field and hearing how you're talking and the compassion that you have for people that are struggling is really, is really powerful because, yes, you are making brutal death metal, but the the soul that is under under it under the the image of you know horror and intensity Mm -hmm. like there's such a there's such a level of compassion and a level of trying to help people understand which is probably why i think people have connected and resonated with your music all these years yeah probably yes and when we when we are on stage we try to share the same, I mean, a, a, a benighted show is a very brutal show, of course, but people always, te- um, always tell me that uh, they really like the positivity that yeah. uh, that, they, that they, they can see and sh- share uh, at our shows. I mean, the music is brutal, the violence is truly there, but it's a positive violence and we have fun all together doing brutal stuff and we take care of each other. So that's, the, that's the spirit of a benighted concert. And uh, I think that's also why people uh, still support us with all this year behind us. It's because they feel that we have this uh, we have this authenticity uh, of what we want to share, and we uh, we we want to to give people a, a positive image of uh, of death metal. Even if the music is very brutal, we can just share very positive things together. Yeah. Well, dude, it's coming, it's coming across, man. And I, I say this a lot. And when I've talked to people, I believe where we are in, in life today, people, yes, people want awesome, brutal music, but as we get older, we crave authenticity and, and you, and you guys doing what you're doing helps not only for us to enjoy the music, but to connect. And we feel a deeper connection because you guys have allowed to open that part of you up on a personal level. Yeah. Mm. Which is why probably people feel so connected. That's, that's an amazing thing to do, man. And um, yeah, that's powerful. I was curious who um, the album art, do you have like one set artist or, who who did the album art? Because that it's so creepy, dude. It's awesome <laughs> it though. Is. It's so awesome. It's it's very funny because yeah, I I can draw a bit, but I draw very bad, 
And uh, for, for two albums now, we work with uh, Robert Borbas, which is which is from Hungary, and is uh, is also well known for, for for his tattoo name artist Grind Design. I mean, he's, a, he's an amazing tattoo artist. I I love him. I've and heard he of works him. Yeah, for, yeah, he works for so many bands. And he's he's so talented and so humble. Also, I mean, that's one of the nicest person and most humble person I've ever met. And uh, he has this unique talent to 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 draw things with all the details that I, I'm really fond of. And uh, for this one, I tried to do with my poor skills. <laughs> so I think I should post it someday just to do show. It. That's what I sent him. That's what I received. <laughs> so, people can, <laughs> so people can really see where it starts and where it's finished and the, the huge difference between the two worlds. <laughs> You have but to yeah, do that. I, 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 I always, I always do that. So I, I, um, he, he, he knows on which ID he has to, he has to start. And uh, I think after that, I just let him do his magic because he's very talented. We, we needed two, two versions of, uh, of, of a cover, uh, one for the normal edition and one, we always do some kind of special edition, like a D, DG box, you know, this kind of stuff. And we needed another, uh, an, uh, a different cover. So he made two states of decomposition of the demon eaten, eaten uh, by the worms. So, uh, and uh, both of them look fantastic. So uh, when I received them, I was like, oh my God, that's so, so beautiful and creepy at the same time. I love it. <laughs> that dude. Yeah. I loved what you guys did with your sublime album with the two, the two covers. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. I think that's really smart, dude. And uh, yeah, that was cool, dude. You um, so you're a lover of like horror movies and everything. Oh yeah. Do you? I don't know if you keep up with too much with like the you know the Hollywood American horror movies, but France has some brutal movies. Oh yeah. Well, um, dude, oh, yeah. do you know you know the movie High Tension? Of course, High Tension. Yeah, yeah. with Cécile de France. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it very well. I, I have it at home. But it's so brutal. it's so brutal, brutal, man. I went yeah, yeah. that came to the states for just a little bit, yeah. and I went to go see that in theaters. And ah, okay, in theaters, are we? Yeah, because I saw it on on TV, but in theaters, it must have been fantastic. Oh my god, man! I went there, and I remember the theater was full, and everybody was like, "Oh wow!" Ooh. And then there was just one part, man, in the beginning where yeah, like you, we the head. <laughs> the head, everybody in the theater, everybody in the theater, everybody was laughing because they're like, oh yeah, the guy's getting lucky. And yeah. then he pulls the head and everybody <laughs> went, you heard the whole theater go, oh. Yeah. but I would I, never, I, brutal dude. Yeah, no, no, but I think nobody could expect such a start of a movie, especially <laughs> at this time, because now it's easier to try to, you know, to provoke a bit or something. But at this time, because I think it was the late Late nineties, I guess this movie. Well, very oh, very early beginning, early two thousands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were, especially in France, we are not used to have this kind of movie, especially that brutal in the beginning. Because I think that's probably the most extreme scene of the movie, and it arrives right at the start. So you're like, mm, okay, <laughs> okay, I know what we're getting ready for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. But awesome, I'm awesome. Now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude. And uh, there was another movie I watched uh, that was called Titan. Yeah, Titan. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, dude, I I wanted to ask, what are what are like maybe some of your top horror movies that have a kind oh. of inspired? Uh, you mean uh, worldwide? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. But first, I would say The Exorcist because that's the movie who traumatized me when I was young. The Exorcist. I really loved it. The Exorcist, yeah. Sorry, I've never Make watched it. My my French accent, you know, sometimes it's a. Uh, oh, you're good, man. It's perfect. Yeah, um, yeah don't I've, hesitate to tell me to uh, repeat if, if necessary. I've never seen that movie. I refuse to watch it. The Exorcist, yeah. Oh, it's so it's so brilliant. <laughs> it but maybe you want to out. keep, you know, maybe you want to keep a mystery or something. Like never watch it because maybe you you don't want to be disappointed if you saw it and you say, ah, I was expecting more. <laughs> I I I think I tried to watch it when I was a kid, and there was one part that just stuck with my head 
where she came down the steps upside down and and i was like yeah no i'm good and it's <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah it's funny because my friends make fun of me i watch brutal stuff yeah and they go they go tommy you watch some of the most insane movies but you can't watch the exorcist mm-hmm. and i'm like i don't know what it is just i don't want to watch it yeah, yeah, true. so all right so the exorcist was good for you the what exorcist- else uh, Martyrs, not, not not the American version because I saw it too and oh, it's not good. <laughs> there was there was a remake of the movie and when I saw that compared to the I think it was maybe a French Canadian collaboration the first movie uh, and it's uh, I mean it was just perfect nothing to move but when I saw the the, the US version of uh, of this movie I was like oh no oh no <laughs> so the, the the first version I I. The, the same thing. The, the, the first scene is so intense, and it doesn't stop. Uh, you you, saw, you watched it or not? I've heard of it, but I've never watched it. Okay, because this one is very good. If you want, I can try to find a link and send it to you. If you want to watch it, it's brilliant, really. Yeah, hell yeah. And the third one, the third one. When I was, I mean, it's not like it's a bit different. It's Cannibal Holocaust. But more because oh. when I was a teenager, I watched it with my friends so many times. We had this kind of uh, funny, uh, funny uh, film, uh, film uh, parties when uh, when we we were eating meat, <laughs> watching Cannibal Holocaust at the same time. You know, like this uh, plancha grill stuff and watching Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> it was just for fun. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I love it. I saw that in high school, man, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude! Classic, yeah. man, classic." Yeah, I, rem- I remember because over here in the states, they made it seem like Cannibal Holocaust was like illegal. Like if you mm-hmm. had a co- if you had a copy, <gasps> the cops are gonna come and get you. And yeah. I re- I remember watching that with my friend, and I was like looking at the the door because I was like, I don't want the FBI to come in, <laughs> take me to jail. Yeah. But they, they created such a unique atmosphere around this movie make, because I think it was a part of a promotion to make people doubt about is it is it a movie or is it maybe a documentary and we never heard about the actors anymore so are they are they real actors or are they true journalists or something so there was some kind of uh, yeah weird atmosphere around this movie which made the, the legend of it yeah yeah it is it is a legendary movie man like you said dude um. One thing I kind of wanted to ask you something a little bit deeper about yeah. you. Obviously, working in with psychiatry and also making music, you I feel like you have to have a strong mind. And uh, I, I feel I, like I, you, yeah. yeah. And I mean yeah. And and so one thing. I was wondering, how do you personally keep your your mind, your your eyes focused when dealing with really tough situations or heavy heavy situations, whether it be with maybe a patient or you know, creating an album is a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. And so I can only imagine the the mental, um, the, what it can do to your mind, the and everything. How do you personally keep your your eyes and your mind keep going, being positive? I would say actually I, I do that for a long time, so I'm quite used to it. Uh, I would say that I always find a way to keep the balance between all the negative stuff I can receive at my work. I receive also a lot of positive stuff at my work and uh, everything is about the balance. So uh, I always try to take the, the negative energy that I got and convert it in something positive. Like for example, writing lyrics or go, go to do some sport or something. I do, I do a lot of workout and stuff like that mm-hmm. to, to release myself, uh, to release the stress and everything. And uh, I also, I, for example, I also inject a lot of music in my work because I, I do a lot of music with my patients. 
I do sports with them. We take care of, uh, but every every Friday afternoon, I bring them to a dog shelter. So we take care of the dogs together. And uh, everything is a, is, a, is about a balance. I mean, when, when it's too hard, when it's too negative, uh, you just save that energy and you put it in something that gets positive and uh, you, you use it for something. And for, for now, it works. I will also say that I have the luck to be in a very, very, uh, very good nurse team where we trust each other a lot. And when someone is feeling a bit down, we always try to cheer each other up. We are very good listeners also. So I think the, um, the, good, um, the good team spirit that we have, uh, that we have in my team uh, is, all, is also a huge part of uh, how long I can work in that and can keep going working for it yeah dude balance balance is key that's a tough thing for people to grasp yeah it's about when you when you have it it sounds pretty easy i mean i do that every day so for me it's pretty easy to get released of uh to, to get uh I'm sorry, released yeah relieved mm -hmm. relieved <laughs> of, yeah. of, uh, all, the, all the stress and uh and bad bad and negative energy i can get uh and so i when i get out of my work i'm ne i'm never like super stressed or because i i know how my mind works i know where are my weak points my strong points and i i deal with that and it, it works it works perfectly for me so far because you never know <laughs> yeah that's awesome man i it, i know a lot of people i think a lot of people and you you have probably seen in the years a rise in like mental health issues mm -hmm. and yeah. and i think i think a lot of people it, there's probably some simple remedies but it feels so like difficult for people to grasp or they feel like maybe they can't change or things can't get better so just seeing how you take care of people and all the light and all the the good things that you bring around the people that you care for and the music it's just a testament to what you're doing and what you're doing is right yeah, thanks bro it's a lot Thank yeah you. dude yeah and um i i wanted to ask though <laughs> so here we are you work in the field with psychiatry dude how the hell did you get into like death metal and make it and making a band like how did how did death metal come into your life like what <laughs> By mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Be, That's how it always happens. Because of, because of horror movies, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I was I was a teenager. I think well, I was a teenager. I was close to being an adult, uh, and uh, I was with uh, Olivier, the first benighted guitarist. We created the band together. It's my best friend, and uh, we were searching for. Uh, for uh, DVDs or movies or something at the shop. And and I found this tape, because at, at this time it was tapes, mm -hmm. of Cannibal Corpse. And, and I, I found the cover fantastic. And I said, look at that. It's, it must be great. Look at the cover. It's disgusting. It's perfect, blah, blah, blah. So I bought it. And the first time when I listened to that once I was at home, I really hated it. But like I was like, what is this shitty music? I don't understand anything. I mean, it's just noise. And what is the man doing with his... I was like, what's the purpose of doing this kind of music? And I remember that I made many, many of my friends listen to it. And at the same time, I, I was uh, make them listen to it. My ear got used to the speed of what was played and the intensity of the sound. And I started to understand what the music was. Because at first, for me, it was just... A, massive aggression i mean it's a, what's the point of that okay or can you listen to that for only 40 minutes i mean it's a, what's the what's the what's is there a meaning behind it i don't understand it and then i started to understand what was played and with olivier we said hey let's try to do a band like that and i was like but i cannot play any instrument so i will try to do the vocals and that's how it started <laughs> damn what a beginning you're just because of cannibal corpse you're so you're thank just them. <laughs> thank you yeah. for them, cannibal corpse. <laughs> you're 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 looking through some crazy stuff you find this tape and now 30 years later mm -hmm. crushing it dude 
what is um was is there any elements on this new album that you wanted to add that might not be on your previous albums maybe something yeah. you wanted to try but the, the, um, especially a different use of the samples because we always write the, we always use the samples as intros or something and for this album like like we do on the song scars the first single that was released uh we wanted to use the samples in a way like really like our movies I mean, to do some creepy part in the in the middle of a song, for example, to you know to calm things down before going back to brutality and uh, uh, keeping this uh, again this 80, uh, 80s eighties uh, horror movies spirit, you know, with the, the the sound, the weird sounds like film like Maniac, for example, uh, that I really lo uh, really love too. Uh, that's the thing that we we tried to do a bit different in the new album. Also, I would say maybe we we have more maybe more of this black metal spirit, but it's always a bit in the background of the previous album in Belighted. Maybe it's a bit more uh, present in the in the in the new album also. But uh, when you listen to it, I mean, it's uh, almost the it's the, the same receipt that Belighted does, just with some small evolutions to make it a bit richer and to give it a, a unique identity of, of of an album. All right, dude. What is one song off this new album that you're really excited for people to hear? I know you <laughs> love it. I know you love every song, but I know there's one song that you're like, ooh, I can't wait for people to hear this. Can you tell me? Yeah, I'm very curious about next Monday because next Monday we, we release the second single of the new album, and it's the single where Oli from Axpire is singing. So you got the, you got Archspire on with the with this yeah, record. Oh, to... Oli, yeah, Oli Oli is singing on a song. Oh my god! The singer god. of Archspire is singing on a song. Yeah, and uh, because we toured last year with Archspire, we made a European tour together. And I mean, they are great guys. I, I love Brutal. them. I mean, yeah, amazing musicians, amazing guys. I mean, I, I love them. And we were partying in the Nightliner, a bit drunk, and I was like, Oli. You have to sing on the new Benighted album. I'm saying, yeah, sure, dude. We're going to, okay, let's do that. But then I realized that we don't have a song. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the song for him to sing. And Manu, the guitarist, had a brilliant idea. He said, you know what? Axe they play at 400 BPM. I will write a song which is 402 BPM. <laughs> and so that's the song that we will release next week. <laughs> oh, dude! D yeah, did you I mean, make it start? Yeah. Did you make? Did you make a video of this song? No, no, no. It's a, only only a song. There is no okay. no music. Video. Okay. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Oh my yeah. god! That's brilliant, dude. That's so brilliant. <laughs> and very funny too. But you will see when it starts. It's like, and uh, police vocals with mine. We we answer to each other very very fast. You, you, you will see, you have to listen to it several times to, to be able to, oh my God, what's going on? Because he, he, he did an amazing job. I mean, I love his vocals and the, the flow he has on the, uh, on the way he sings is just, uh, it's just, it's just unique. And uh, the result of the song, I, I'm curious to have your, your opinion about it when it will be out. But I'm pretty sure people will be like, what the fuck did they do? <laughs> <laughs> but dude, that, you, I feel like that's just... That's just cool, man, because it's it's connection and everything and making just really great music to blow people away. That's what people want, you know? Yeah, and I, that's what I we want, too. And I love to be blown away when I listen to a band and like, oh, my God, yeah, that's good. I'm, yeah, a, I'm a music fan before everything. But... Um, What is – uh? do you have – are you able to tell us maybe a – um? I don't know if you're allowed to. Are you able to tell us maybe like a, I don't want to say crazy, but like a story from your work that has like stuck with you throughout the years? Oh, I, I have a very funny one, which makes always people laugh normally. So please laugh at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a patient that is, uh, my God, yeah, yeah, yes. Of course, a severe condition, but he, he, he has a delirium about electricity and very small, how do you call that? 
uh, what, what's the name for that? You know, these this little things that works for uh, some who make, who make like some elves. Different. Yeah, like a bit like that. Yeah, and he is very concerned about this kind of things uh, entering his body while he's asleep, for example. So he, he puts a lot of things in every hole, not to not to get uh, okay, so not to get assaulted or infiltrated when he when, when he's sleeping. And uh, he was starting to feel pretty bad in the, in the belly. Cannot tell you everything that he has put inside his cock and everything so far, but uh, <laughs> let your imagination grow. And uh, we, we sent him to the emergency because we were a bit worried about his belly. And the first thing that, that the doctor does when you're constipated is he, trying to see if something is stuck uh, uh, in, in your ass. Yeah. So the doctor put a glove and he put the um, the finger inside inside the, my patient's ass and put it straight outside and and yell like ah! and it was bleeding and the patient said I put it a nail inside. I forgot to tell you <laughs> because he didn't want the the little characters to go inside his ass, so he put it a nail. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, the doctor was as his finger bleeding because of that, and it's pretty disgusting because it's, it's inside an ass, you know. And uh, and then when you do this kind of stuff, when you're exposed, you know, with blood and everything, you have to write a report. And we told the doctor, please make us read what you will write <laughs> because it will be very funny to read. <laughs> but, oh my God! I can only imagine. But, yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's, that's terrible, of course, but that's, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Dude, yeah. Um, Julian, I always like to end an interview with, uh, with a question. I ask this to everybody. Mm -hmm. First of all, before I go into this, man, this, this has been awesome, dude. I am, you have made me so excited for this new album even more. I wanted to ask if you could pretend with me, let's imagine benighted, you retire benighted. You're 50, you're, you're 60 years old and, <clears throat> and you're in the future. <clears throat> what is one thing that you hope to hear from people that have been affected by your music? If they were to come up and say, Julian, I've listened to your music for all these years and uh, this is something that your music has done for me. What is something that you, you hope to hear from people that have enjoyed your music for all these years? Well, something comes immediately to my mind because I, I heard it already several times. It was when people come to me and said, I was in a very, very dark and uh, hard time and uh, your music helped me go, go through it. And for me, that's one of the most, uh, of the most, uh, I would say, glorious reward. When, for example, someone is uh, is suffering with schizophrenia, and comes to me at a show and say, and has the, how can I say, the, the trust in me to be able to share with me something like, hey, you know what, I'm sick myself. I take this kind of medication. What do you think about it? Because I have these symptoms. And for me, it's very, uh, it's very moving for me to have someone. But I absolutely don't know. But trust me enough through my music to be able to to how do you say that to to tell me very private things about their mental health because they, they feel like they, they can share they can share it with me and uh, and because we are listening to the same music also they don't feel uh, they don't feel judged or they are not afraid that I will just you know say oh you're sick go away or something like that you know. For me, that's that's the greatest reward I would say, dude. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You are, you're you're making badass music, and you're affecting people's lives, man. And I try to, to do my best. Huh? <clears throat> well, you are, and and you'll you'll never know the effect. You'll never know all the people, all the thousands mm -hmm. of people's lives that you touched through your music, your storytelling. It's amazing that your passion for heavy music horror just your sense of humor has has been such a positive force in people's lives mm -hmm. man and uh again man this has been an honor to hang out and talk with you dude 
Thank man, you, man. My this pleasure. was yeah, very enriching for me. So thank you so much, dude. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. It was so awesome being able to sit down and talk with him. Such a cool dude. I hope that you enjoyed this. And as always, guys, thank you so much for your love and support. We started out as a reaction channel, and now here we are. We're interviewing bands and artists. And uh, if you believe in what I'm doing, you can support me through Patreon. Everything goes for me to go full time. We are building something more than just a reaction channel. But nonetheless, I'm just grateful you're here. So thank you for taking time out of your day to check out this interview with Julian from Benighted. And just know that you are incredible. At the end of the day, you are what matters. So keep your head up, stay lovely, stay metal, and we'll be back with another episode.